I wasn't just a Trump supporter. I was a true believer. I was one of his closest advisors. The Trump family became my family. I spent Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's all at Mar-a-Lago. I saw him when the cameras were off. Behind closed doors, Trump mocks his supporters. He calls them basement dwellers. On a hospital visit one time when people were dying in the ICU, he was mad that the cameras were not watching him. He has no empathy, no morals, and no fidelity to the truth. He used to tell me, it doesn't matter what you say, Stephanie. Say it enough and people will believe you. But it does matter. What you says matter. And what you don't say matters. On January 6th, I asked Melania if we could at least tweet that while peaceful protest is the right of every American, there's no place for lawlessness or violence. She replied with one word, no. I became the first senior staffer to resign that day. I couldn't be part of the insanity any longer. When I was press secretary, I got skewered for never holding a White House briefing. It's because unlike my boss, I never wanted to stand at that podium and lie. Now here I am, behind a podium, advocating for a Democrat. And that's because I love my country more than my party. Kamala Harris tells the truth. She respects the American people, and she has my vote. And Democrats, I've had the privilege for over 20 years to see that future taking shape with a star in Alameda courtroom by the name of Kamala Harris. I saw that star, I saw that star fighting for criminal justice, racial justice, economic justice, social justice. I saw that star get even brighter as Attorney General of California, as a United States Senator, and as Vice President of the United States of America. Kamala Harris has always done the right thing. A champion for voting rights, civil rights, LGBTQ rights, the rights for women and girls. So Democrats and independents, it's time for us to do the right thing. And that is to elect Kamala Harris as the next president of the United States of America. California, we proudly cast our 482 votes for the next president, Kamala Harris. Good evening, Milwaukee. And hello to everyone joining us from exciting Chicago. The delegates at the Democratic National Convention, well, they just completed their roll call. And they have nominated Coach Walls and me to be the next Vice President and President of the United States of America. And I thank everyone there and here for believing in what we can do together. We are so honored to be your nominees. This is a people-powered campaign, and together we will chart a new way forward. Friends, we're here to talk about one thing, tomorrow, and building a better tomorrow for all Americans. This November, we can choose a brighter, a fairer, a freer future, or we can relive the dark night of Trump's American carnage. And let me tell you what else we must do. We need to join the rest of the industrialized world and guarantee health care to all people as a human right, not a privilege. Illinois' presidential pedigree is unmatched. 
And given that Vice President Kamala Harris spent some of her early life right here, I speak for the entire Illinois delegation when I say we claim her too! Now, one president we will never claim is the con artist the Republicans nominated in Milwaukee last month. Donald Trump once called Chicago embarrassing. To quote a great Chicagoan who won six world championships on these very grounds, we take that personally. I had to govern for two years while Trump was president. Let me tell you what's embarrassing. In Illinois, we passed a massive bill to fix our roads and bridges. When Donald Trump proposed his own plan, he turned right around and called it stupid. We eliminated the grocery tax. Donald hasn't been in a grocery store since his first bankruptcy. Illinois invested in clean energy and the jobs it brings. Donald claimed that windmills in the ocean made the whales a little batty. During COVID, we supported small businesses and jobs. And Donald, well, Donald told us to inject bleach. Donald Trump thinks that we should trust him on the economy because he claims to be very rich. But take it from an actual billionaire. Trump is rich in only one thing, stupidity. My mother is the only person in the whole world who thinks Kamala is the lucky one for marrying me. And to Kamala, who, well, we just saw where she is. She's out on the trail, listening to and talking with voters. Honey, I can't wait for you to come back to Chicago because we're having a great time here. I love you so much. I'm so proud of how you're stepping up for all of us. But that's who she is wherever she's needed, however she's needed, Kamala rises to the occasion. And she did it for me and our family. And now that the country needs her, she's showing you what we already know. She's ready to lead. She brings both joy and toughness to this task. And she will be a great president we will all be proud of. Wonderfully magical is in the air, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're feeling it here in this arena, but it's spreading all across this country we love. A familiar feeling that's been buried too deep for far too long. You know what I'm talking about. It's the contagious power of hope. The anticipation, the energy, the exhilaration of once again being on the cusp of a brighter day. The chance to vanquish the demons of fear, division, and hate that have consumed us and continue pursuing the unfinished promise of this great nation. The dream that our parents and grandparents fought and died and sacrificed for. America, hope is making a comeback. <laughs> My girl, Kamala Harris, 
is more than ready for this moment. She is one of the most qualified people ever to seek the office of the presidency. And she is one of the most dignified. A tribute to her mother, to my mother, and to your mother too. The embodiment of the stories we tell ourselves about this country. Her story is your story. It's my story. It's the story of the vast majority of Americans trying to build a better life. Look, Kamala knows, like we do, that regardless of where you come from, what you look like, who you love, how you worship, or what's in your bank account, we all deserve the opportunity to build a decent life. All of our contributions deserve to be accepted and valued. Chicago, it's good to be home. It is good to be home, and I, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling fired up. I, I, I am feeling ready to go. Even if, even if I am the only person stupid enough to speak after Michelle Obama. I am feeling hopeful because this convention has always been pretty good to kids with funny names who believe in a country where anything is possible. Because we have a chance to elect someone who has spent her entire life trying to give people the same chances America gave her. Someone who sees you and hears you and will get up every single day and fight for you. The next president of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. And, and looking back, I can say without question that my first big decision as your nominee turned out to be one of my best. And that was asking Joe Biden to serve by my side as vice president. Now, uh, uh, other, other than some common Irish blood, Joe and I come from different backgrounds, but we became brothers. And as we worked together for eight, sometimes pretty tough years, what I came to admire most about Joe wasn't just his smarts, his experience, it was his empathy and his decency. And make no mistake, it will be a fight. For all the incredible energy we've been able to generate over the last few weeks, for all the rallies and the memes, <laughs> this will still be a tight race in a closely divided country. A country where too many Americans are still struggling. Where a lot of Americans don't believe government can help. And as we gather here tonight, the people who will decide this election are asking a very simple question. Who will fight for me? Who's thinking about my future, about my children's future, about our future together? One thing is for certain, Donald Trump is not losing sleep over that question. <laughs> Here's a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. It has been a constant stream of, of gripes and grievances 
that, that's actually been getting worse now that he's afraid of losing to Kamala. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. It, it, it just goes on and on and on. The other day I heard someone compare Trump to the neighbor who keeps running his leaf blower outside your window every minute of every day. <laughs> now, from a neighbor, that's exhausting. From a president, it's just dangerous. The, the, the truth is, Donald Trump sees power as nothing more than it means to his ends. He wants the middle class to pay the price for another huge tax cut that would mostly help him and his rich friends. He killed a bipartisan immigration deal written in part by one of the most conservative Republicans in Congress that would have helped secure our southern border because he thought trying to actually solve the problem would hurt his campaign. He doesn't do not boo. vote. Vote. He doesn't seem to care if more women lose their reproductive freedom since it won't affect his life. And most of all, Donald Trump wants us to think that this country is hopelessly divided between us and them, between the real Americans, who of course support him, and the outsiders who don't. And he wants you to think that you'll be richer and safer if you will just give him the power to put those other people back in their place. It, it is one of the oldest tricks in politics from a guy who has, let's face it, gotten pretty stale. <laughs> we do not need four more years of bluster and bumbling and chaos. We have seen that movie before, and we all know that the sequel is usually worse. That, that sense of mutual respect has to be part of our message. Our politics have become so polarized these days that all of us across the political spectrum seem so quick to assume the worst in others, unless they agree with us on every single issue. We start thinking that the only way to win is to scold and shame and out-yell the other side. And after a while, regular folks just tune out, or they don't bother to vote. Now that approach may work for the politicians who just want attention and thrive on division, but it won't work for us. As much as any policy or program, I believe that's what we yearn for. A return to an America where we work together and look out for each other. A restoration of what Lincoln called on the eve of civil war, our bonds of affection. An America that taps what he called the better angels of our nature. That is what this election is about. And I believe that's why if we each do our part over the next 77 days, if we knock on doors, if we make phone calls, if we talk to our friends, if we listen to our neighbors, if we work like we've never worked before, if we hold firm to our convictions, 
We will elect Kamala Harris as the next President of the United States. And Tim Rawls as the next Vice President of the United States. We will elect leaders up and down the ballot who will fight for the hopeful, forward-looking America we all believe in. And together, we too will build a country that is more secure and more just, more equal, and more free. So let's get to work. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America.